Hi everybody, Tommy here from Queers and Soaps. I just wanted to introduce you to some friends of mine who are about to embark on some fun soap opera discussion. So tune in and enjoy, and I will see you soon. Hello, and welcome to Queers and Soaps. I'm Eric, and this is... <laughs> Karen. <laughs> um, today we're doing episodes October 14th, 1981 to October 22nd, 1981. Um, Tommy will roll the credits and we'll begin. All right. So first I must say, we had a GH cast member die this week, Robin Bernard. So rest in peace to Robin Bernard, who played Terry Brock from 1984 to 1990. She was the daughter of... Brock, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they really... have the first name. What's his first I, name? I don't, I don't remember it. They just call him Brock. They call him Brock almost the entire time he's on. Something Brock. Yeah. Um, he's not even she... on yet where we are, but he's coming. She's also sister to Crystal Bernard from It's a Living and Happy Days and many other shows and stuff. Um, so may she rest in peace. Yeah, she seemed to have a tough life, so. So, yeah. So October 14th, 1981, we're at the hospital. Slick is excited about the babies coming. He apparently drove a taxi. And this woman with having four babies was in the car. <laughs> well, he got her to the hospital. And yes, because he said um, something along the lines of, I got in the car and there was one person and I got out of the car and there were five people. <laughs> Yikes. Um, so Amy's, Amy's very excited about the babies. She's excited yeah. about everything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's bouncing all over the place. It's adorable. She's very excitable. Um, we have Leslie and Rick are at Kelly's. And uh, I have excited about the divorce. Who's excited about the divorce? They're excited about Scotty and Laura's divorce. Right. Everyone's excited about this happening so that Laura can marry Luke. Sorry, my notes don't make sense sometimes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I have Stella. Oh, the um, the will reading of um, Alexandra. So these were these are these are like jam packed episodes. Like, there's a lot going on in these episodes. I, I was really excited about this because, like, the reading of a will is always, like, it's such a TV thing. It doesn't happen in real life. This is right. def this is where this happens. And, like, Lee made them wait. Like, he was yeah. over a half an hour late. He was just like, whatever, they can wait. I don't care. And then he, he was at dinner with Gail. And she's yeah. like, uh, you want to go? We got to be there. And he's like, uh, no, they can wait for me. I've waited for them. <laughs> so it's fine. Mostly because since the moment they found out that Alex had died, Edward's been up his ass about this will. And mm -hmm. Lee is not in the best mood because he's worried about his son. And nobody seems to care about Scotty mm -hmm. in this situation. Everybody's focused on Luke and Lauren, how they're heroes. And he's irritated by this. And then Edward is just like, Where's the will? Where's the will? Where's the will? And Lee is just like needle in them. Yeah. And so he's sitting at the table and he just goes, I haven't even finished my coffee yet. And Gail's like, We're already a half an hour late and we're not even in the car. <laughs> and he's like, Oh no. <laughs> right. So we get to the will reading. Stella gets a vase. I guess it's a crystal vase. It's gotta no, be an no. expensive vase. No, it's what a Ming, it? it's a Ming vase. Oh yeah, they are pricey, and they are like outrageously expensive. That's a Stella could retire probably on what that one <laughs> vase is worth. She does not care yeah. about. Alan gets a bunch of stuff that's left in the basement, boxes and such. <laughs> I feel like the joke is that they were all of Alex's packing crates and that they're empty. I think that's what the joke is because Alan starts laughing pretty hard about this. Yeah, he's like, he's "What are?" He's like, this is great. What what a great quarter main thing to do. I have Alex made a codicil and she leaves diamonds to Edward. But right. are these like are these real diamonds? Like is it no. real? No. So what, what was she, it? What she left to him was a stake in what the the remember they have the 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 formula that Laura memorized 
to mm. make the carbon diamonds. Well, all diamonds are carbon, but like the right. basically the spun carbon into diamonds plan. And so she w- left that to Edward, which would have made him like so much money. Right. But, but they it didn't. destroyed it all. Yeah. They destroyed so it. he got nothing. <laughs> and what does Lila get? Lila get, <laughs> um, I think it's 35% of the shares in ELQ. And ELQ. The, this is what Edward wanted. He wanted to know where the stocks were going. He thought he was getting stocks. No, this isn't what he wanted. This is what he said was going to happen. <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to get my can I get my stocks? Can I get my stocks? Oh, can we get my socks? Like, come on. Can we get on with this? I want my stock. <laughs> and then he's and she's he's like, uh, no, that goes to Lila. And he he's like, pissed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because because of something he's done. Mm-hmm. Because he did what rich men do, and he has a lot of his holdings under Lila's name, so he doesn't have to pay taxes on them. Which means that Lila now owns controlling share in ELQ. <laughs> Yay, should be fun. And so when um, they asked him about it, he was like, to save tax money, idiot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's rough in this episode. Yeah, he is. <laughs> um, so we have Heather, is, uh, Rick and Leslie, Heather, they're all at um, Kelly's. They, mm-hmm. um, Tiffany comes in, they're all a bunch, they're just random scenes. This is where like I feel like they catch up with each other's storylines. They're talking about the Luke and Laura wedding, which is like the big talk right now. Even though we're a month away from it, Luke and Laura want like nothing. And right. then everybody wants a wedding for them. Like the biggest wedding ever, apparently. Yeah, because they all want to celebrate their friends. But this is also where we're starting to see Rick and Luke and Rick and Le- and Leslie and Luke start to build actual relationship with Luke. They, they don't is, know him. This is the party, right? This is yeah, the party. they just yeah. kind of come in to have dinner and it turns into a party. Tiffany mentions filming her new movie in Port Charles. I don't know if that becomes of anything or if it's just like talk. She wants rent. to do a movie. Um, I'm getting a feeling that during Ice Princess, because I didn't watch all of Ice Princess, that Robert tricked her into siding with them by saying that he had all this money and stuff. And I think yeah, that's why he's having such a hard time letting go of the idea that he does have money. <laughs> So I think she gave up her film career to help them. And now she just wants to get back into it and start her movie. And Laura's face, when Tiffany starts hitting her father up for money, she was horrified. And like mm-hmm. Tiff, is, Tiff is shameless. You have to be proud of her. She is. Shameless. She's just like, give us money. Give me money. Give me money. I want to make a movie. I made a side note. You know what I hate about back then? They don't uh, they let people talk for real, and I can't understand what the fuck they're saying. Oh, every, I, I was going to try to wash my mouth on here. What the oh. French they're saying? <laughs> <laughs> every every party they have, in in on one hand, I like it because it feels more realistic. But on the other like hand, it. it's loud as hell. Every party loud. is loud as hell, and you can't understand. I can't understand what, what they're saying. saying. Yeah, like they could. There's a way that they could like people can, which now you know nobody does that anymore. They're like. Like even on days they do a better job with that stuff back then. Like they don't they don't do that. Like it's so loud. Yeah, it's really loud. It it's it's distracting a lot of the time. It is. But it I, is. I, I don't know. I kinda like it sometimes because it just feels like they're real people at a real party. And that's what a real party's like. Now, is it good <laughs> is it good for television? No. no. Do I like it sometimes? <laughs> Yeah, I like it. I like it. I never also, like it because I want to hear what they're saying. <laughs> well, I like it because I feel like in the future parties, th- there's nobody at the damn parties when you're like, on General Hospital. There's they can't like, afford it. There's a well, cast of 50 or 70. They're never all on. Never. <laughs> right. And that's the thing. You can't have one day where you have the entire cast on to have a damn party. Like every time you turn around, you're like, it's the same four people. Like when Carly got married one time, she had like a bachelorette. There was literally her mother and and Olivia at the Bachelorette. She has no <laughs> friends, and I'm like, this is sad. At least in the old show, you had like a a, a host of friends, like you knew people. Right. There in the future, no one has friends. No one has friends. So, Amy calls Kelly and or Kelly's and um, wants to talk to Laura. She's excited about these damn babies. Like Laura's probably like, what are these babies? Like, what are you talking about, girl? And the divorce. Um, Laura seems disturbed. 
<laughs> She's looking at me. She can't hear anything Amy's saying. And Amy is saying things like, uh, there's so many babies, babies divorced. And I love you. And and it's loud at the hospital and it's loud at Kelly's. And Laura is just like, yeah. I, I can't hear anything you're saying. And she's like, I love you. And she's she makes the face and she goes, Well, I love you too, Amy. I I guess I'll call you later. Like, because she can't hear anything. <laughs> and it's just again, this is a moment where you're gonna hate it because it's loud, but I love it because it feels like real life. <laughs> at the hospital, we have paparazzi wants pictures of the four babies. I'm like, was that allowed to happen at that time? No. And Slick gets interviewed because he was a cab driver. I don't know. Is this like a side story that we're not like, or is this going to come into something? Do you remember? No, it's not going to come into anything. I, sometimes they do fun so storylines that story. are connected to the hospital. And the thing that Steve does really well in this situation is like, these babies are premature and they're quadruplets. So they're obviously in incubators at this point. And these guys come in and they want to take photos and stuff. And Steve's like, you can't take photos of the babies. They're barely five minutes old and they're, they're too small. Get out of here. And, right. and Slicker, he's really smart because he distracts them by being like, come over here and take pictures with me and hear the whole story. And it like really kind of saves the situation. And Slick's funny because he pulls Steve into the pictures. He pulls Amy mm -hmm. into the pictures and he makes a big right. spectacle, spectacle out of it, which he's is excited. a great. Yeah. And it's a great way to keep the reporters away from the actual mother and all her children. That's so Les Leslie suggests to Rick that she they should try to get to know Luke. This was kind of silly. Um, he's like, he didn't really want to right now. Didn't find it was like time. And then like Luke goes in the kitchen and like is making burgers and Leslie like doesn't know how to flip a burger. I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> like, this is supposed to be a bonding moment where yeah. I feel like, I feel like it was forced. Like I no, felt like I they really should have come up it. with another. I loved it but because I wasn't a fan. Oh, I really loved it and you're wrong. Um, Rick doesn't want to bond because he's not over the idea that Laura is getting divorced to get remarried right. and how everything is happening. Um, Leslie's smarter in this situation. She realizes Laura's her own person. She's going to do whatever she wants to do right. and they need to become family. So she goes into the kitchen and she basically lets him show her how to do things so that he feels in control of the situation. Leslie is a really good person. You'll see that later when she is in the restaurant across from Monica, who used to sleep with her husband. Uh, so like, yeah, yeah. you're going to see like Leslie really gave Luke an opportunity to shine in that moment so she could ask him questions and learn about him and in a position where he would be less uncomfortable to be in the room with the soon to be mother. -in -law. I got you. So I really, <laughs> again, I, well, it was silly, but it was silly in a fun way. I laughed a lot. I had a great time. Like <laughs> I was having a good time. It's so cute. Um, so Lila back at the mansion. Uh, Lila's like, what a lovely surprise. Like, because she wasn't expecting anything from Alex, I guess. Edward's very upset and feels betrayed by Alex. Um, yeah, even they're... though he shouldn't be. I mean, but it's Edward, so whatever. Well, <laughs> I mean, this is a really fun scene because, like, Edward is oh, no. his mom. I have that Lila has 60% of Yale Q. Yeah, because she <laughs> she has thirty five percent. So she had thirty five, and now thirty five more. No, oh no, no, that would be seventy. Whatever. I, I she has down, sixty percent. <laughs> I wrote down the percentages of it. It was twenty five and thirty five, which okay, gets her to sixty percent. There you go. Okay. I only wrote down the sixty part. <laughs> and I also wrote down a lot of what Edward was saying because I was cracking up. He was he was killing me, and he said one of the ways women are supposed to come in handy. Is, is for the taxes and so he gave her all of this stuff and now he's screwed and the funniest part of that is lila faking that she's tired and going to bed when he wants to discuss it and then he mm -hmm. is still, he's crazy because he wants to charm his wife so he drinks two full snifters of brandy <laughs> and alan and monica are cracking up and they're making mm -hmm. fun of him and it's yeah. like he really it's really funny because, it was really funny because they're like, "Oh, she doesn't care anything about her, anything but her teas and her charities and her gambling in Florida." And he's like, he's, <laughs> "She's gonna lose the company." <laughs> like, he's right. like, and then he goes to charm her, and she has locked the bedroom door. And she tells him <laughs> she's sleeping. Yeah, that was fun. I was crying. I was crying. I had so much fun. I love so Monica. Back, she's the best. Back Back in the kitchen, we got Luke saying that he's totally committed to Laura and to Leslie. They have a nice little moment there. They're making burgers. Um, people keep trying, like, interrupting. Mikey comes in. He smells burgers. He's so cute, that kid. Yeah, he is. 
Um, Edward tries to get Lila to turn the socks over to him already. He don't waste any time. That's when she fakes for being tired and stuff. Um, Mikey lives next door to Rick in the room above Kelly's. Yes. I guess it's like an Airbnb. Before it has they were been. It's always been. It's she, always people, been. people used to rent rooms. Well, nobody lived there now, right? Um, not currently, because once once um Carly took Put over as the owner, they didn't have anybody that was in between places. I th- they I, I that a thing. They sh- they could have put decks up there, but they didn't. Yeah, and right. Yeah, a lot of people. Many people that could have Kelly's like um Jimmy Lee Holt lived above Kelly's. Oh, Joe Kelly lives at Kelly's. Like everybody lived at Kelly's at one point or another. Luke has lived at Kelly's. Bobby's lived at Kelly's. Everybody has lived above Kelly's at one point or another. Or Bobby's now currently. Yeah, Heather comes <laughs> in. She she mentions Stephen Lars. She wants partial custody, so she's I guess fighting for him. And she has been consistently. She's just not yeah, getting aware of that. Right. And I guess she wants help, Rick's help. I don't know what he can do. Um I have a man is brought into custody. What part was that? Okay, so it's just a quick little clip that there's this tall guy with dark hair that they arrest. We'll come back to him later. But okay. like they just he is the guy that has been robbing the houses. Oh, the Heather. OK, gotcha. Right. So they think that he may have been the one that killed Diana Taylor because he was he had broken into the house previously. They think he broke into the house a second time. Um, so they have caught him and arrested him. And it's literally like a second. They show him and then they cut back to the party at Kelly's. Right. Um, yeah, we're at the party. Um, everybody's dancing. Laura's worried about Rick and Luke not getting along. Um, Heather tells Rose about the custody thing. Luke and Laura want some, finally get some quiet time. Um, they talk about having the quiet wedding. Just them two. Well, they go out on the docks away from the yeah. party. And they talk. And it's very cute. Their banter is always kind of on point. And it's really just about how they just want the decree so they can get married. <laughs> Tiffany mentions that her at the party that she wants to uh, what, what for Robert to produce her movie. She's pushing this movie. <laughs> well, she's still That's in all I got denial. For that episode. She's still That's all I got for that about, one. Well, I have a lot, but she's in in denial about him not having the money. Um, there's a lot going on because Joe was upset in the previous episode because Ann Logan got very drunk and she he ended up leaving even though she was kind of like entering her slut era and she was just like i'm going to be a hoe like is basically what she told joe and joe was like you're a good person why would you do that and she got tanked and he left there and heather's really upset because heather's in love with joe and so heather thinks that joe's in love with Anne. so when joe gets back to kelly's heather's pissed at him because she thinks that he was fooling around with Anne. But he wasn't. So October 16th episode. No, I don't there's, know still, it... there's still more stuff going on. I don't know why you don't have any notes on the rest of this episode. Or if I just put it all in one episode. Um, you might have put it all in one. No, I'll start 10... out with October. I'll okay, start out with October 16th and we'll go. Sure. Um, Bobby and Leslie and Monica are talking in the beginning of this one. Susan brings Jason in. Monica says he won't be a quarter main heir. I love that line. That was great. Right. She said, no matter is what that, you what you do. Is that matching your notes? Or? Yeah. He'll never be okay. a quarter main. Um, Tiffany and Laura chat about Robert Luke. Uh, Luke gets a telegram about the yacht, right? Yes. Yeah. And, and then the yacht, is going, about- the yacht is going to be delivered in a month. So they have a month to figure out what they're going to do with the yacht. Because remember, it's going to cost five grand a month to bunk the yacht at the, the shipping yard. Yeah, this the yacht's like ruining them right now. Mm-hmm. Um, Tiffany and seems to envy Luke and Laura. Um, Laura's afraid her love will end. Um, what she's saying she's... is that she's very much in love with Luke and it's extremely right. intense. And she's yeah. wondering if it'll fizzle out. Now, Tiffany consoles her by saying that Tiffany has been both in love and had money and has never been in a situation where love has superseded money. 
And Laura kind of indicates, well, what about Robert? And she's like, oh, Robert has a bunch of money. And Laura's like, he doesn't yeah, have any money. I know. <laughs> That's what I said. Tiffany still thinks Robert has money. Um, Susan and Alan meet up. Um, she's bugged by his family. Um, right. uh, she shouldn't have come back. Monica seems to win. So what um, she's saying is that she shouldn't have left New York and come back, like New York City, to come back to Port right. Charles. Because everyone in town doesn't want her with Alan because she is, in fact, the mistress. And right. Alan is ignoring that. And Monica was right. Her baby won't ever be the quarter main heir. I can tell you yeah. that from the future. So, like, what she says to her is true because Monica is the legitimate wife. And Susan is a homewrecker. And no matter how she wants to spin their greatest love of all or whatever, she's still a homewrecker. Like right. they're not divorced. And Alan blows well, all this it, off. He doesn't it care. Still takes, it still takes two. I don't blame Susan. I'm not 100%. saying it doesn't take two. <laughs> I'm saying that Susan should have been smart enough not to get involved with a married man of a rich family where this is all going to go. This is not going well for her. And she was right. She should not have come back to the cottage. But she did. So Luke and Robert meet up with a dude. They want to sell. They're trying to try to sell the yacht, it looks like. So they one. meet with an appraiser. But I think Luke gets his wires crossed because I think he believes that this guy will buy the yacht. And really what this guy does is he appraises the yacht for how much it's worth. Mm. And it is worth $5 million. So the guy tells them, you can do one of two things. You can hold on to it until there's a buyer. Right. Or you can sell it for scrap. And if you sell it for scrap or even if you get a buyer, it's you're not going to get the full $5 million for it. The market's not there for that. Right. So there's no like there's no easy solution to the yacht situation as of yet. <laughs> Edward is kissing Lila's ass. I love that. <laughs> it's so he funny. Her flowers. He's all up her ass. Yeah. Like, yeah. And she's just like, I guess she's enjoying the moment. <laughs> she's like, it doesn't happen often. Well, she's an amazing character, and um Edward always thinks he's the smart one. And he has nothing on Lila. Lila runs circles mm -hmm. around him all the time. And she's really enjoying this attention and this power she has over Edward at the moment. And I am too. I laughed a lot during this episode. So I have Alan talks to Edward. Saying, he says to Alan that he has no backbone and recommends abortion. Oh, so what he said to Alan was, first off... <laughs> Edward got flowers for Lila. He got like three dozen flowers. And in that conversation, we find out that Edward hasn't bought Lila flowers. And he says 20 years. She says 30. <laughs> so we are starting so to get. 30. So it's 30. <laughs> right. So when Alan turns up, um, he gives Edward a bunch of crap for giving Susan a hard time. And he's like, everyone in this family needs to get on board and leave Susan alone. And <laughs> Edward says to, says to him. Well, we didn't t cause the problem. I didn't have the affair with Susan. That woman <laughs> is your mistress, and that boy is your biggest mistake. And when they go in to discuss it, Edward says, you should have fixed it. And Alan's like, how? And he's like, you should have got an abortion. Yeah. And he's like, well, you didn't get an abortion when your mistake happened. And he goes, I didn't get the choice. So <laughs> if it were up to him, he would have gotten the abortion. And you know, kill all his babies. Sure, because their <laughs> problem. Spawned. They're a problem. He's he wanted to have dog. sex. He didn't want to have illegitimate heirs. So Tiffany freaks out with Robert. She finds with the diamond mine thing again. She feels used. I'm like, girl, so in you're my the notes, one using him for his money. In my notes, it <laughs> says, he doesn't have. why won't she believe him? Is she ill? He is poor. <laughs> <laughs> But he does kindly cut like it takes him like forever to drill this into her head. He's like, it was it was my cover. I didn't have any money. I don't know why right. you think I have money. And this is when I, it kind of became clear to me that he tricked her into helping him. And yeah. that's why she's holding on to this idea that he has money so hard is because she gave up a lot of stuff to help them during Ice Princess, expecting that this man would help her. Well, she didn't because she was kind of with um, Tony. V Victor. Victor. Sorry, Victor. Um, I know. See, I was confused because Tony, well, the guy that plays Victor is Tony on days, but there's another Tony. So it really, it really mind screwed us, uh, me and Tommy, when we were talking about it. 
<laughs> but um yes yeah, so i mean he did use her but at the same time she kind of deserved to be used because she is an asshole for money oh she's a gold digger in my opinion but I, I, I don't really hold it against her because at the time it, it's really hard for her in her career to do anything without a backer. And I love her. I think right. she's really ballsy. I love, she tries I love, money. I love her too, but she's an asshole. <laughs> the best um, asshole. Alan, <laughs> oh, don't Alan forget, Monica. don't forget in this, scene though, because Luke comes home and she is smashing things in their apartment. And like Luke comes home and she literally growls at Luke and Luke runs away into the other room and locks the door. And it is very funny. It can't skip gold like that. <laughs> um, oh, so Alan and Monica chat. He wants her to avoid Susan. He wants civilized behavior. And she says she has a lot on him and will use it against him. Yeah, she's just like, uh, yeah, you're having an affair. You had, you don't have the high ground. I have all the information and I could destroy you if I wanted to. Then I have Tiffany's ball pissed at Robert. Bobby and Ruby come in. The senator seems to be interested in Luke and Laura. Because everybody is. Um, and who and is the senator? That, he says that Ruby looks familiar to him. Okay, so... The senator is Noah Drake's dad. Right. So this is, um, I forget, they, I think they just call him Senator Drake. When you get to the party, Tiffany's getting drunk. When you walk in, Tiffany has already had several glasses. She is getting drunk. She is mad at Robert. And Robert says, don't make an embarrassment of yourself or something along those lines. And she goes, I never do. And that was kind of how they, they were dealing with. And obviously, this the senator wants to use Luke as base. Everybody wants Luke as a showpiece. But is this a setup for Ruby because she looks familiar to him? Like, because no, she met him before? Yes. yes. And I did immediately pick up on that. But also, he then later says that I've seen you at the hospital. And he uses a weird term for it, but. She was apparently doing the shoe shine booth at the hospital at one point. Right. I, it's and confusing. Yeah. So yeah. she was either cleaning the hospital <laughs> or she was shining shoes or she was, you know, I think it was something along the lines of basically busing for money. Um, Cause what we're doing in this scene is, is we're pointing out that Bobby Ruby and Luke are low class to these people, right. not to us. We don't care. We're also poor, but Bobby yeah, gets very Bobby uppity, gets, holier than now. Well, he's very speechifying and he is trying to help in his own way. But Bobby gets drunk at the table because she's nervous. Um, right. Lu Luke is mouthing off. Laura is trying to kick him under the table to stop him. <laughs> and and Senator Drake is just going on and on about how he thinks Luke could have a political career. And he was like, what's your schooling? Where where did you go? And Luke's like, uh, nowhere. I'm poor and I've never been to school and I worked on the docks. <laughs> So it's kind of like a have versus have nots conversation at the table. And who and who hits on the senator? Tiffany. <laughs> yep. Yeah, she wants money. Can't find money where Robert is. Um, and he wants to talk um, about Luke's image. Everyone does. Everyone does. Alan ends up leaving. I guess he goes to live with Susan. Yeah, he packs up a suitcase and he says he's going to the cottage. Luke and Laura have a romantic evening. She gets on them for being rude to the senator. She says they want, then she think, you know, they're getting hot and heavy. She says she still wants to wait till marriage. And he says he'll wait and then he leaves. Um, That's all I got for that episode. When they're, when they're still at the dinner, um, the owner of the Versailles room comes out and offers to cater their reception. And um, they're like, no, no wedding, no wedding. So like we're having right. this continuous through line of them trying to have a tiny wedding and no one allowing them to have a tiny oh, wedding. Yeah. We also see the quarter mains are out at dinner because Edward in, is still trying to schmooze Lila. So he takes her yeah. to dinner and they They're stop to the talk dinner. to the senator and they say hi to everybody. It's kind of like a hi and bye. Um, they, <laughs> oh no, the best line of all is... Edward and Lila are sitting at the table and Lila's dessert comes out and it's flambe. And Edward says to her, eat your flambe, darling, before it goes out. 
<laughs> um, so yeah, and then Drake chats about their their um the image, Luke's image, and everyone's trying right. to stop Luke from being an ass. Um so in oh, October when, 20. Oh, oh, I, yeah. when I have notes, but when Alan moves out, Mon I love Monica. So Monica looks at Alan and goes, Forgive me for not kissing you goodbye. <laughs> and um he's not happy about it. And like when he goes uh, He's sad to leave AJ, but he goes to the cottage and he goes to the cottage to ask Susan if he could stay. And he looks around the cottage and he's just like, not impressed by the cottage. You can <laughs> tell he's a little, he's a little rich boy. And then right. that's that cute little kissing scene with um, <laughs> Luke and Laura. Although it is funny because you do see that Luke is oversensitive about being poor. And he gets very mm -hmm. upset because Laura says that everybody was basically being crazy at the table and that Bobby right. was drunk and spilling things. And he gets very defensive of his sister. Cause remember Laura and Bobby are not friends at this point. No. And then we go on to your 10, 28 uh, one. <laughs> October 20th. Your notes are um, not I, enough notes. You have to make more notes. We have a Claudia. Well, that's why you're here. Or I could just talk by myself, right? <laughs> I'm going to hang up on you. <laughs> <laughs> so October 20th, Claudia sighting. Yay. They, they she doesn't do much. She just talks to Laura about their adventures because everybody's interested, of course. Um she calls Luke. Robert says he went for a job interview. And now you could talk about the job interview. <laughs> I will I will be talking about the job interview. Just remember that Joe is looking for Heather and he has good news. So this is about that guy that was arrested. But he can't well, find his, Heather. His good news isn't that great. No, it's like, not. It's... <laughs> no. But go on. It's, it's, Luke spec it's speculation. Okay, so Luke has a job interview at this place called RBJ. And he is being so weird. Like, he comes into the interview. He flirts with the secret secretary in a way that makes her feel very uncomfortable. He sits down waiting. He's, like, very hyper. He's very singy, very, you know, weird. He's reading the magazine, but he's really staring at the secretary. And he goes into the job interview, and this guy tells him that they love his image. They love everything <laughs> about him. And he's like, oh, great. Well, let me meet the other partners, and I could start right away. And the guy goes, well, do you want to start right away, or do you want time to get a haircut and a new suit? So they love everything <laughs> about him, except they hate everything about him, and they want him to be a completely <laughs> right. different person. And so he, does, he does what I do. He's like, I don't think this is for me and he left and i 100 percent agreed with him and this all these episodes are like luke goes to a job interview they don't like luke very much luke leaves <laughs> but they want him they <laughs> yeah, all want him yeah they're like haircut suit become corporate <laughs> <laughs> and then robert has, um, a has a phone call yeah so tiffany goes to robert she calls her agent where's robert's phone call what Robert has it says where you uh, at? It, that's where I am. So Robert Robert has a phone call. He's oh. on the he's on the phone when Tiffany shows up. Gotcha. And he seems to be arguing with whoever he's on the phone with. We don't know. And then he hangs up. Tiffany walks in, and um, she uses his phone to call her agent, and she also uses the phone to call Collect to her agent, which right. was hilarious. And her agent is not interested. She cannot get through to her agent. She's trying to get. Anything she can going to get some money <laughs> for she that movie. She doesn't have any money. She doesn't have any place to live. And she doesn't have a job. Like, look right. at it through her eyes. Oh, I do. I do. I'm not saying bad things. Jeez. I love Tiffany. I didn't say she was an asshole this year. This time. This year. You just said she was <laughs> All right. Anyway. This time. Um, so anyway, Claudia mentions a big wedding. Here's the thorough line of the story yep. constantly. Yeah. Laura's jo like, Job interviews no. and wedding. Laura says no wedding, but you can have a bridal shower. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. And that's so the, they're all like at the clinic, like in and out of the clinic. And yeah. um, they run into um <laughs> they run into Brian and like Laura's like, Well, I gotta go. And Brian's like, Wait, where are you going? And then he's like, Big wedding, and everyone's like, No big wedding. And he's all oh. <laughs> and I'm like, Brian's been in this episode for three whole seconds. We never see right. him. So and here's they, my note when um, Rose and Joe are together and Heather comes and that's what she's saying she has a bad day and Joe wants to tell her something. Well, Luke, um, is, Luke is in the real estate office and it is very green. 
Like everything is green in there. And then Heather shows up and Joe is has his stupid weird theory. That's <laughs> he's that just he, like he's is, like this yeah. guy, this guy broke into a house once, so clearly he's the murderer. And she's like, Joey, you don't even know if you did you find the gun? Do you know if he broke in a second time? Did he confess to anything? And Joe's like, No, but basically what Joe says is there's gotta be a way that it has to be this guy. So we're gonna pin it on him, basically. And you'll right. be fine. And I'm like, Joe, <laughs> what kind of lawyer are you, man? There's no case here. It's all circumstantial <laughs> evidence. And you have no smoking gun. I don't yeah. know what I was thinking. I know. I was like, this isn't great news. I mean, it's a nice theory, but yeah, whatever. Well, Heather gonna prove it. doesn't believe it either. She's just like, this isn't good. This isn't enough. But she kind of buys into it because she's like, all right, we'll celebrate anyway. Right. I know. So. Um, so Tiffany has a global surveyor guy come over. He's the editor wants, from the global surveyor, which is a rag. He wants to do a story on the island stuff. He wants juice, though. He wants, he's like, was there an orgy involved and all this crazy he, shit? <laughs> he wants slutty, slutty little details. And Robert gets so offended. And I was like, you could have made it all up. Who cares? That's like, what I was going to say. Like, that guy did a terrible job. Like, he, he should have went in saying, like, legit things. They could have told the story and he should have twisted it for his paper. Like, that right. would have worked out better he for him. Been like, and, and then, then all Tiffany four of money. them were a couple. <laughs> like, <Right. laughs> he could have added so much to that. Yeah, because now we got thruples. We would have had a quadruple. <laughs> a quadruple. <laughs> yeah. What a, a quad? I don't, I don't, a polycule, probably. Um, but, like, I noticed in the That was a funny that, part, though. But both Robert and Luke have so much pride like a little a little too much pride yeah. to help them in this situation and i'm not saying i'm not exactly the same way because i am but like seeing it seeing how angry robert got I'm like there's no need for that just say no thank you but right. he, he got enraged and he was like how dare you and get out of here and he's evicting yeah. this guy from the room and tiffany's like but we could have worked with a guy i mean yeah it was gross but we could have made it work we, you know, <laughs> you now, know, see i was on tiffany's side now you, that, and again like i do say she's an asshole but i do like good assholes and she's yeah. a good one yeah she's amazing i love her um, although we can't talk about it really but the 1983 tiffany got on my nerves like with that way she was with rick blah um, but anyway, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> back to 1981. Um, so we have Luke and Laura looking for a dream house through this stuff, and Amy's getting involved in that. And it's cute because they're exciting. at the real estate office, and he's just basically having a conversation with a plant because he's uncomfortable with the whole idea of the picket fence, the house. This is uh, not a new thing for Luke, and it won't ever get old, even in the future, way into the 90s. He doesn't want a regular house, he doesn't want a regular life. He only does it for right. Laura. But even as early as now, Laura wants a house. Laura wants stability. And you know what's so funny to me? We can't really talk too much about the wedding yet. But, like, it always, like, all of this stuff is happening. And Laura leaves, like, the beginning of next year. And I'm always, like, it's just, it's a shame that she left so soon, you know? Like, it, I would have loved to have seen what they would have done with them for a few years after this. Because they have all this build up and this big huge wedding and then like or maybe not well, <laughs> for I spoiler mean, alerts out there you can't help with like contract disputes and yeah ar arguments and one of the big things about soaps is a lot of times you cut your teeth on acting in soaps and then you move on to do other things and i believe Jeannie francis did an awful lot of murder she wrote yeah, and Jeannie she, was going through a lot of stuff back then, too. And I think that's what it well, she was, was, too. Young, and she needed a chance to right. not be on television every day and be in everybody's face all the time. She needed a break. So, but I do agree with you. I think I really would have loved to have seen them give normalcy a go for five minutes. Because, uh, you know, I know where the storyline goes after that. And, you know. Right. But you when... Heather is talking to Joe. She said that she had a bad day because she was fighting with Susan. And Joe's like, I don't know how that's possible. Susan's so easygoing. Right. And I'm like, uh, is she? <laughs> so I have Luke and Laura find, uh, they get a, they find a penthouse or whatever. And it's 2,500 a month, which for that time is insane. Right. <laughs> uh, yes, absolutely. 
And it's a fixer upper. Luke says no, and they talk about the wedding. Well, one of the things was there was a hundred and ninety thousand dollar modest house <laughs> in Harbor View, which is where the quarter main mansion is. So you can oh, understand, yeah, you can understand uh, why it was so expensive. That makes sense. And Laura was really embarrassed because they were either showing them slums or they're showing them mansions. They weren't showing them anything in between. Right. Um, everybody's at Kelly's, Heather and Joe. Um, I have Heather and Joe go off. A man comes to talk to Rose. It's a note from Hutch. He can't help. Okay. So first off, Heather took the afternoon off and then came back to work for an hour. And then Joe came in and then Heather took the rest of the evening off. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Rose is a pushover. And Rose even says, Rose is like, oh, you're going to celebrate. It's fine. Go, go, go. And even Heather stops and goes, but a bunch of people just came in. Are you sure you don't need me? And Rose is like, no, go ahead. And I'm like, Rose, you're dumb. <laughs> like, you're never going to close. So, I know, what, right? Um, I'm sorry. What were we talking about? We were talking about um, um, just oh, the, the letter. Um, so yeah, the letter. Everybody comes in and they start being loud and eating food. And apparently corned beef and cabbage is on the menu. Fantastic. I, I made a note that everyone treats Kelly's like it's their parents' house because they're all they go in the kitchen, they put on aprons, they do dishes sometimes. Like they literally right. treat Kelly like does anyone pay for any food at this place? So this guy who comes in, he's a he's um, I don't know, a merchant marine or a navy guy. And he right. comes in because he met up with Hutch in New York. And Hutch gave him the letter because he was state he was going to Port Charles next. And he said, drop the letter to Rose. In the letter is a, a heart necklace. And the letter is just like, you deserve better. And Rose is like, well, did, are you going to see this guy again? Can you send him a message? Can you help me find him? And the guy's like, lady, I ran into him randomly in New York. And I'm about to get on a ship and go out to the ocean for like three months. I'm never going <laughs> to see this guy again. And she's like, right. oh, I guess it's okay. And I'm like, Rose, damn it. But also, <laughs> all these people let this man that they have never seen before in their entire lives take Rose into a back room alone. And it felt very menacing when he handed that letter over. I was waiting for him to say something like, you have been served. It was like weird <laughs> yeah, right. for me. I just, I guess my modern sensibilities are like, you are not safe. I don't know why they're letting this happen. But it was right. fine. It was fine. Um, and and then we have like a nice little moment with Heather and Joe. They're being cutesy together. Um, she throws a penny in the water. She wishes the night could go on forever. Says thanks for believing in me, and they kiss. Oh, that was cute. That was a nice moment. I guess because he, you know, he's still trying to fight to find whoever this killer is or whatever. I think he wants to believe in Heather because he likes her. Is there more to this than it just being a prowler, or do you think is that it? Do you know no, more? I know what happens. So <laughs> okay, so there's so there's more to it then. Yes, <laughs> but I like I can't say anything because I literally know what happens. So, um, it it's not this prowler. I can tell you that it's more than that. <laughs> this it is guy not is this, this guy is just a robber. He's a he's a burglar. He's not a murderer. Okay. Um. The fun thing is, though, when they're all at the Kelly's having dinner, because Brian and Claudia are there, Luke and Laura are there, Tiffany, Robert, um, they mentioned that Mikey isn't there because Slicker took Mikey to the zoo. <laughs> I was yeah. like, everyone in this town is raising this cute little boy. Yeah. Like, he, yeah. literally everyone in town is like, Mikey is my new son, and I shall he's, cherish him forever. He's in between homes right now. <laughs> well, I mean, his grandmother died. His mother is missing. Um, she she ran off, um, so yeah, he literally has no family. So my last note on this one is Tiffany wants to capitalize on the story, and they all cheers. Here's to divorce, or here's to the wedding, and here's to the divorce decree. That's well, all I got for this. Brian um, again talks about the wedding. Everybody talks about the wedding. Everybody's mad that they don't have a big wedding. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just crazy. I do think it was funny because Brian and Claudia were in the middle of hanging out with all of their friends and they just stand up and go, oh, we have to go to the movies now. Yeah. And then they're like, does anyone want to go to the movies? And everybody's like, no. <laughs> and then they take their party back to Robert's penthouse and that's when they they cheers and all. So they move from Kelly's to there and their, their toast is my favorite toast. 
because it's all <laughs> this and poverty too. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's where they're at, pretty much. That's right? where they're at. Yeah, it's a very this, these episodes have been very funny and mm -hmm. very lighthearted. Yeah. So I I feel like we're building up to something else because everything's been so like. I know it feels, the will is yeah, funny. It feels like there's more juice in these episodes than in 1983. <laughs> so I don't know what happened. Yeah. Maybe different new writers. writers. Yeah. Um, so we get to October 22nd, which was our final episode of this um, series here for the day. Um, Steve, Monica, and we have Georgia, who's one of the nurses at the team center. I don't know if she ever has a life outside of work. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think Just so. see her I randomly. Think I think um, Jesse Brewer used to, and then um, as she got older, I, the actress was sick for a long time. So I think Jesse Brewer and George, Georgia, you only ever see at the nurses station. Oh. I mean, you, you see Amy everywhere because she's wonderful, but I think those girls you just see at the counter from then on. I wonder if you they um, talk about her like when she's gone. What? Left Georgia when she leaves. Like, I wonder if they like mention her. Like, oh, she went to <laughs> wherever. Well, General Hospital has a habit of mentioning you after you go wherever you go, they mention it. And they also have a habit of naming new characters after old characters. So, mm. as we have Dante, we have Dr. Dante, and then we have Sonny's son Dante in the future. So, oh, like, yeah. it's they kind of a, a ton. Yeah, it's a constant like a, um, reusing of, of names. Name. I like, yeah. I think it's very legacy based. Um, so Alan and Susan are at Kelly's. Amy see this Amy is helping Luke and Laura find a place. Um <laughs> yes. And Amy overhears that they moved in together at the cottage, and she's excited because this is hot new gossip for her, and she needs to tell everybody mm -hmm. she's ever met ever. I love her. Oh yeah. <laughs> of course. And Lila she's like they're Cole's living together. <laughs> and everyone's like, we all know, Amy. We already know. <laughs> and um, so Lila actually calls Luke. Yeah, I have that right now. And she invites... Well, before that, I have... Um, Tiffany's still getting on him about this diamond mine. Does she really think that he has money still? No. <laughs> no, at this point, it's become like a sick joke. So she's like a joke. Okay. She's using then... it. She's using it to needle him all the time about okay. everything. It's very funny to me. So, yeah, Lila calls, meets with Luke at the LQ. I okay. like that he says, <laughs> what does this sexy old lady want with right. me? <laughs> right, because he thinks she wants to meet at the house, and she wants to meet at ELQ. <laughs> right. And he has no idea why she's at ELQ. And they seem to think that she they want money back from something. I guess they lent money. Do you know that situation? They got the fifty thousand dollars was from the quarter mains. They remember Robert mm. and Luke both have fifty thousand dollars. I believe it was like a reward for not everyone dying. Or they may have okay. gotten the money from Alex. It's not really that clear where the fifty K came from. Yeah, I didn't know where it not came from when I started watching, although maybe I should go backwards and watch some of the Ice Princess to see if I can figure some of this stuff out. Because I know right. like a broad strokes of things, but the tiny details sometimes elude me. Yeah. So uh, we have that Laura wants to live at Beecher's Farm. Is that something? Beecher's Corners. Beecher's, Beecher's Corners. Corners. Is, Beecher's Corners is where they went when they were on the run. They stayed at the Whitaker's Farm. Okay. So yeah, that's why we have. I put two old ladies talking about Luke and Laura <laughs> until I got their names. They're Esther and Agnes. Esther Calhoun and Agnes Whitaker. Yes. So they were in the summer storyline before the year before. I guess, yes. Like, and you. Leslie and Rick have also stayed there and they also know the Whitakers. Uh, Beecher's Corners so is around. like like a fun vacation spot. It can't be that far from Port Charles. It, it's probably like going like going to the Poconos for us because they all the last about time. It. When's the last time they mentioned that? Do you know? What, Beecher's Corners? When Luke and Laura came back from Beecher's Corners is when they had the cigar, the cigar band wedding, like where he gave her the cigar band. And then when she left Beecher's Corners and they came back to Port Charles, when Scotty confronted her, she knocked the cigar band off her hand because she didn't want Scotty to see it. So that was the last um, time they were in Beecher's Corners. So. I got you. It's very, it's sad. Actually, <laughs> um, 
Oh, a comment on oh. the meeting, the meeting between Luke and Lila, which was excellent. Um, mm -hmm. cause she, she said Alex trusted Luke, so she would trust Luke and she wanted to give him a job. And he basically says, I'm not a corporate chill. And she's like, I understand that. And she gives him the peace sign, but she does it this way. Right. Um, mm -hmm. in England, this is not peace. <laughs> so it was funny that they both did it the same way. Very American. But like, I almost wonder because Lila is British. <laughs> Right. If that was done intentionally as a funny little joke. If anyone's from England, that's a funny little joke. Maybe. But I cracked up laughing, and I keep I writing we'll "I am Luke" know. every time he's like, "I can't work nine to five. I can't. I can't sit in an office all day." And I'm like, <laughs> "You we are, are We are one. I am him. He probably has ADHD too." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Probably because, like you said, he couldn't settle down and stuff. He's all over the place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very similar. So, yeah. She she wants him to work at ELQ. Um, I like the, I did make a comment of she, who is it? Oh, Leslie says to Agnes, Robert, the one with the patent leather hair. Oh, I wrote that, that down. It is. <laughs> what does because, that mean? It's because his hair is, is very like, um, like a, excuse me, like a Ken doll helmet, I would say. And I think that's what she meant by that. That uh, it was very okay. smooth and very like, um, perfectly no flyaways, but. I mainly I wrote it because I didn't know what it meant. I'm like, I find, I find Leslie to be a hilarious human being <laughs> because she she was taking that kid to X-ray and she was joking with that kid the entire time they were going to X-ray. She and she was like, "Oh, don't run any marathons," and he's like on crutches. And then <laughs> she stops at the elevator to go get the phone call, and she's like, "Don't go anywhere!" Like the kid's like limping around right. on crutches. And he's laughing and she's laughing. And I'm like, she must be really good with like the pediatric patients. Yeah, for sure. I did like that. I also wrote the patent leather hairline down because that. Makes <laughs> that so Robert and Tiffany meet for a book deal on an island adventure. They're getting like $50,000 in advance and they want everything. Robert isn't feeling it. Tiff is mad and says, suck eggs, Tiffany. <laughs> Robert well, says unfortunately. <laughs> Since Robert was a spy with the WSB, there's a lot of information he has that is classified. And right. this guy was like, well, you have to tell us everything, all your classified Yeah, he wants, like, all the spy juiciness. And Robert can't do that because, like, he was... They did mention another character who I, I wasn't familiar with. Um, but I don't know if that spy died or if that spy is still working, in which case Robert would have blown their cover if he gave any information out. And he actually even mm. toasts that woman when to, when he tells Tiffany to go suck eggs, which was great. Right. <laughs> that was um, funny. But like he even toasts that woman and talks to her as if she's not there. So I'm wondering if this is someone who has died. Because sometimes I don't have all the information. So Agnes and Esther are talking. They're going to visit Fort Charles. And they're wanting a big wedding as well. Yeah, everyone wants a big <laughs> wedding. <laughs> Luke insists, no big wedding. Slick is bugging him for it. Amy's bugging Laura. <laughs> she makes it be the best man. He's not just begging for it. He's gagging for it. And he wants to be best man. Laura made a call to see if a letter came from Mexico. Is that the divorce decree? I thought she already had she that. Or called, no, that? she called Joe's office because they, they signed the decree, but the decree had to be filed in Mexico and then mailed to Joe Kelly because Joe is her lawyer. So she called Joe Kelly's office to find out if the letter had been there yet. And Joe's secretary said no. Right. Because she couldn't Luke. bring it home with her because it had to be filed and that takes a while. So it was going to take four more days if she stayed there in Mexico. But otherwise, they were going to file it and send her a copy. Luke turns another job down. <laughs> did, you so, get, did you catch where it was? It was, um, it was a Rolls Royce dealership. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure what it was. And it had very bad vibes. Um, and I agreed <laughs> with him. One of the things I did love about this is is the owner of the um, the dealership was very sweet to him and told him a story about how his son died and how he wanted to basically replace his son with Luke so that he could have a legacy. And Luke was kind of digging it until he started saying again, you would have to be talking to the upper crust all the time. And Luke just does not know how to handle the rich. He doesn't respect them. He doesn't respect hierarchy. So like for him, it's really difficult to be in these situations where he's supposed to be hobnobbing with these people who are his betters. And it's always about changing him into a different person. So I get, again, right, right. 
why he didn't take the position. But it does really feel like everyone in town is throwing jobs at Luke and he's just dodging them. Like, no. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Well, yeah. He doesn't he wants to be happy doing what he wants to do. Right. Uh, Monica and Lila talk. She mentions that or Monica mentions that Alan tried to kill her and chased her and Rick with a gun. Yeah. Lila doesn't believe it. Lila says, Hold on, that they're right for each other. And he wants she wants to like well, she wants Monica to make Alan sue her. Yeah, so Monica admits to Lila that she hates the house and Alan has made her hate the house because he's put her in this kind of untenable situation with Susan and the other baby who, who she loved mm -hmm. the minute he was placed in her arms. Um, <laughs> so she's really having a hard time with this. And I love this because um, I love it because it's the mother-in-law and the daughter-in-law are like team quarter main. And even Lila says, she goes, I was a quarter main wife first. You need to hold on or you'll get nothing. Make him sue you so you get more. And I love this dynamic of having the women side together. Right. And she's like, wait, let's let's have dinner together and we can talk about our plans to screw over your son. And she's like, I have a charity, gots to go. And she just, <laughs> she goes, but like Alan and Susan are going to the floating rib. Leslie is going to the floating rib. Everyone's going there for dinner. And now Monica... Yeah decides because she doesn't have anyone to have dinner with that she too is going to go to the floating rib. Everyone's going yep. to the same place. Everyone's going there. They do that all the time. I love it. And everybody goes to the same. But I do like that too. They don't do that as much anymore, I feel like. But it's fun when they did it back then. And they did the best thing ever. The thing is the happy couple is sitting at the table and then they sit Monica with a clear <laughs> view of her husband and his mistress. Of course. And then Leslie, they come in and, and like Leslie's so hilarious because she asks Laura and Amy to go to dinner with her. And they're just like, nope, we got plans. Goodbye, Ma. And she's yeah. like, she's so cute because she's like, but I'm hungry. <laughs> and, and then she's like, I can go. I can go by myself. I'm a grown up. Myself. I'm a grown up doctor person and I can go alone. And she just looks yeah. at Georgia and she goes, do you believe that? Because I don't believe that. But I guess I'll do it anyway. So when she's sitting at the mm -hmm. table by herself, she sees Monica sitting by herself. So it's like this triangle of, of hell where Leslie is looking at the woman who slept with her husband, looking at the woman who slept with her husband. So I'm going to read my last note because I want you to comment on it because I didn't understand sure. something. Okay. So Monica, I have Monica goes out for dinner where Alan and Susan are. Leslie is there. She joins Monica. Drama. She says that she understands the situation because she was in that situation when Monica had put her there in a way. Mm -hmm. Monica and Rick, because it takes two. <laughs> Monica mentioned he wouldn't have left her if the baby was his. So when Monica I was, was when Monica and Rick were sleeping together, I don't was think... it a possibility that AJ was Rick's? Yes. Or okay. So we find out that AJ is Alan's through some stuff that's very classic for General Hospital now because of when Michael was born. So there's right. a thing called the Quartermain birthmark. And they wouldn't know until AJ was born whether or not he had the Quartermain birthmark, uh, which he this does. Is where the birthmark, that's what you were looking up. I remember you were Quartermain birthmark, yeah. <laughs> so AJ has the Quartermain birthmark. It marks him as a Quartermain. But until that happened, Rick was going to stay with Monica because he thought and she thought that there was a possibility that the baby was Rick's and Alan was upset because he thought that the baby was Rick's and that Rick was trying to pass off his baby as Alan's so when AJ is born I think this is a lot of why in the future um, both quarter main parents have a hard time connecting to AJ is because of all of this that happened and he was kind of like this I think Monica would have loved him more if he was Rick's son and I think Alan like had a hard time bonding with him because he initially thought he was Rick's son. So this all screws AJ in the future. Right. Because he knows for a fact that Susan's baby is his baby right from the jump. He gets to be way more attached in the beginning because right. he's not attached to AJ until AJ basically has heart surgery and shows up with a quarter main birthmark. Which, by the way, Michael had, I think, the same birthmark and may have had the same heart surgery, I think. That's cool that they keep something like intact like that. That's why I'm always like, check these people for the quarter main birthmark. <laughs> it's old school. And uh, so, yeah. Even, so though, that's what, even, that's though, that even though they didn't do their research when it came to Monica and Jason. <laughs> no. Clearly. 
No, but I also kind of think that's that if you're generous, that that's not the current writing team. The current writing team has been making so many comments about the exact era we're in right now. It's funny. Um, but <laughs> yeah, like, right. if you look at it from Monica's point of view, Mon it's been 30, 40 years. She may want to remember it as a more pleasant scenario, considering how much <laughs> she loves Jason in the future. Right now, yeah. But, but I, it's funny because literally like the first three years she's talking about yeah. <laughs> not wanting Jason, not so, wanting him in the house, not wanting Alan to do anything with him. Like <laughs> she's and very the first time Jason. the first time she holds that baby is is not not for a year from now, I believe, is the first time she holds that baby when they go to to the house and they help like Susan so somebody the somebody hand the baby over and she's like <laughs> she she takes the baby because um this is in the, this is like a year from now. So Susan was drunk and they went to the house to make sure the baby was okay. Monica had the baby. She bathed the baby and put the baby to bed, but she did not love that baby from the first time. She, <laughs> the baby. she hated that baby. She hated that baby's mother. She hated <laughs> Alan. And um, so yeah. every, when she said that line, and I, I do repeat it a lot to you for comedic effect, but it is crazy <laughs> to me that someone who hated that child for three years can straight face, look at the camera or her family or whatever, and be like, I love that baby from the minute he was placed in my arm. <laughs> and you're just like, no, you didn't. You hated him. You hated him. You like Alan tried to kill you. Like there's so much going yeah, right. on. And you're like, it was love. And my relationship, she should just be like, and my relationship with Alan was perfect. And I loved Edward dearly. And it's like, right. no, none of that happened. And then, so this, yeah, this episode ended with um, Luke, Laura, Tiffany, and Robert having dinner. Nothing really much happened in that. Yeah, they got free out. champagne at the um, Versailles room. And, um, right. So it must have been like a Tuesday. <laughs> I just love Leslie. She's like, but I'm hungry and I'm all alone. <laughs> <laughs> that was so cute. Right. Um, Any more notes on this? Because we got to wrap it up. No, I think... I think, well, I just want to make a comment on what a big person Leslie is in this scenario because mm -hmm. she, she looks and she looks and I'm like, Leslie, be a girl's girl. I know it's, it's a tough, and she does. She, they're both it drinking was a nice wine. Moment. They I sit together and like Leslie straight up gets the apology she deserves from Monica. And I think this is the beginning of when they get friendlier towards one another. Cause I guess yeah, maybe they nice. both realize that the problem is men. I always love those situations where they bring two people that hate each other at one point together. Well, I mean, she was sleeping with Leslie's husband. What right. is Leslie supposed to think of her? And it's not like they didn't work at the hospital together and they weren't right. aware of one another. This is not of exactly. Monica accidentally dated Rick. Monica was married to Alan and dating Rick. Right. And she so, knew. She knew better. She knew exactly what she was doing. And I thought <laughs> this was a really wonderful scene because... Leslie's like, well, I know how you feel. And Monica's like, well, I know you know how I feel. <laughs> <And> she, <laughs> right. She's like, it sucks, doesn't it? And she's like, it really feels bad. And like, they just have this <laughs> very like cool bonding moment. And yeah. I, think, I think they're both such I strong, like well-written female characters that I just really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was fun. It was really fun. So we only, I think we have less than a month till uh, the Luke and Laura wedding. So I don't know how many episodes that is. I don't know how many episodes are available, but we'll look into it and we'll bring up, you know, more to you very soon. The writing is stellar. It is. It really is. It, it feels so different from 1983. Fresh, right? Entertaining, very funny, mm -hmm. yet dramatic. Mm -hmm. It's good. Yeah, got it all. So thanks for joining us today for Queers and Soaps. Um, subscribe, like, and comment on whatever we're doing. Let us know if you want us to do anything else. Um, other soaps and TV movies, we're up for anything. And uh, have a good one, everyone.